In this video, we're going to look at using charts from within Kendo UI for Angular. To get started, I'm going to make a new project named Kendo Charts with the Angular CLI. So let's use ng new Kendo dash charts. Now that that is complete, we can cd into Kendo dash charts. We'll now need to install the dependencies from within our project. So I'm going to do this by installing the Kendo Angular Charts package the localization packages, the drawing package, HammerJS, and Angular animations. As you can see, there's quite a few packages here, so I'll add this to the description. And if you've not set up your NPM registry to target progress yet, visit the first introduction to Kendall UI video here on the channel. So let's install these dependencies. Now that that's complete, we can say ngserve-o, and this will open our project inside of the browser. I'm then going to open this up inside a Visual Studio code. The first thing that we have to do is import our dependencies into our root app module. So let's head over to app at module.ts and import the following. We'll need the browser animations module. So let's import that from angular slash platform browser slash animations. We can add that to the list of imports. Next, we'll need the charts module. So let's import that from at progress slash Kendall dash angular dash charts. We can then add that to the list of imports. And then we'll also need to import hammer.js. We can now head over to our app component.html. And from within here, we can add ourselves a Kendall dash chart. We can give the chart a title using Kendall dash chart dash title. And we can hook into the text attribute here. And we can say the text is equal to student exam results, because we'll be using an example of student exam results. Inside of our app components, I'm going to have a years array. And this is simply going to be an array of type number equal to 2012, 2013, 2014, and 2015. We can pass this into our chart by saying the category axes is equal to that year's array. We next need to add a legend for our chart. So we can say Kendall-chart-legend. And from within here, we can add a position of bottom and an orientation of horizontal. Next, we want to put the data for our chart inside of the Kendall-chart-series. So inside of the series, we'd have a series item. So we'd say Kendall-chart-series-item. And for each one of the items, we can do an ng4. So we can iterate over this series item. And we can say let student of students. So let's now create that students array. So we have our students. And the students array is going to contain four different students. So we'll say the first student has a name of Paul. And the results each year is equal to year one was 90, year two was 77, year three was 94, and year four was 30. So not a good year four. Let's make some more mock data right here inside of our students array. This one can be Katie. This one can be Dave. And finally, this one can be Sarah. Let's make some mock data for each one of these. And as you can see, now we're left with this students array with a variety of different results. Back inside our template, we can then add the type of chart that we want to add. So if we, for example, had a line chart, we could use the data attribute to bind to that student.results. And finally, the name attribute to bind to the student.name. So if we take a look in the browser at the moment, we do find that we have no styling and nothing is there. Let's import the default theme within our project. We can say npm install at progress slash kendo dash theme dash default. Let's save this to the project as well with dash dash save. And now we have to import that style sheet, which is an SCSS style sheet. And you might be in the same position as me at the moment with your project. You've generated a CSS project with the Angular CLI. And you need to instead generate an SCSS project with the Angular CLI. 
I'm going to head over to the Angular CLI.json and instead within our styles, I'm going to say styles.scss and our default extensions, I will put scss for our style extension. Let's quickly rename our style sheet, our app component.scss and tell our app component.ts that we're now using scss. Then inside of our styles.scss, let's import the theme that we just installed into the project. We can do that by saying at import progress slash Kendall dash theme dash default slash scss slash all. Let's now restart our project. So there we have it. We have our student exam results, but there's a little problem because we don't actually have our bottom axes. And that's because our category axes needs to state that the categories is actually that year's array. So if we save the file, we can now see that we have 2012, 2013, 2014, and 2015. What if we wanted to display this information as a bar chart? We certainly could. We could change the type to be bar. And there we have it. We have now a bar chart for each one of the years for each person. It would also be a good idea to see a tooltip when we hover over one of these results. So let's do that by adding a tooltip to our chart. If we say Kendall-chart-tooltip, we can add a tooltip to our chart. So now if I hover over 2012, Paul, we can see that it's 90. The same for Katie. We can go down for Dave, which is a 50, and Sarah, which is a 10. What if we want to click on this chart and get some particular response from that? Well, we can do that by saying series click. Let's have a look now by saying chart item clicked and pass in an event here. If we write the function inside of our app component, chart item clicked, as well as the event, we can console.log the event for that click. If I now open the console and click one of the charts, we can see that there was a series click event for that chart item. Another good thing is that you can see the chart actually is responsive to the window size. So if we check this out on a few mobile devices, it looks good no matter whether the phone is horizontal or vertical. So in this video, we've looked at getting started with Kendor charts from within the Kendor UI package for Angular. If you like this, then obviously hit that subscribe button, leave a comment in the comment section below, and I'll see you very soon in the next video.